You might want to take a moment to reread the problem before listening on. Initially, the 100 picofarad capacitor is connected to a battery that supplies a potential difference across the plates of 50 volts. And what that does is it charges up this capacitor. You can actually calculate that charge by taking the capacitance and multiplying it by the potential difference across the plates. So let's go ahead and do that by just plugging in the values of capacitance and potential difference. And when we compute this, we can see that the charge stored by the capacitor is going to be 5,000. And this will come out in picocoulombs rather than coulombs because we plugged in picofarads. So this is how much charge is stored on the capacitor initially. We then take that capacitor, which we've labeled C1, and we move it into a new circuit. And this new circuit has another capacitor, C2, that's in parallel with that original capacitor. Now remember that 5,000 picocoulombs of charge that was stored. Well, the key to this question is to understand that that 5,000 picocoulombs of charge is conserved. So the total amount of charge in the new circuit is still 5,000 picocoulombs. This is the conservation of charge. That is the key, as we will see, to solving this question. Now, let's continue on. The total amount of charge would be the charge stored on capacitor 1 plus the charge stored on capacitor 2. And again, that's going to equal 5,000 picocoulombs. Now, we've labeled the potential difference across the plates as being V. Another key to this question is to understand that when you have two capacitors that are in parallel with one another, the potential difference across their plates is the same. So we're not using V1, V2, we're just using V to denote the potential difference across each set of plates because again, that potential difference is the same when the capacitors are connected in parallel. Now, they told us in the question that the potential difference across the first capacitor is 35 volts. So the V for the first capacitor is 35 volts. That means the V for the other capacitor is also 35 volts. That is very important for solving this question. Now, let us return to the equation that we've been developing down here. We know that Q1 would equal C1 times the potential difference across its plates. And then Q2 would be C2 multiplied by that same potential difference. Now we can begin to plug in some known values. We know that C1 is the 100 picofarads. That is an inherent property of C1. It's not going to change even though we've switched it into a new circuit. So C1 remains 100 picofarads. The potential difference across those plates is 35. We don't know the value of C2, but we do know the potential difference across the plates of C2. It was, it was that 35 volts. And this is equal to 5,000. This should have been picocoulombs. Now it's just a simple algebra problem. We can multiply these two values together. We could subtract the 3,500 picocoulombs from both sides. And then when you divide both sides by the 35 volts, you will see that C2 is approximately 42.9. And this is a capacitance, but it's going to come out in picofarads because we had plugged in picocoulombs into this equation. So this is the correct answer for the capacitance on C2. And again, it really depended on understanding that the total amount of charge in the initial circuit was going to be the same as the total amount of charge in that other secondary circuit.